Well, for some of you, it isn't a good morning now, is it? So, the topic on this one is, do you know where your money is? It's the 1st of September, 2023. Some of you are waking up to discover that you can't put your hands on something you think is yours. Now, I'm not going to beat up on anybody. That's not what this is. But it's just a gentle reminder. And usually when I say this kind of stuff, it usually goes on for a long time. And I have to be elsewhere today with one of my sons. So I won't be here very long with this one. <laughs> you, uh, you may not have been part of the audience you know, last year when I was doing Twitter space. Now it's talking about a lot of things you're seeing come to fruition in the world, not just in America, but around the world. And I said that uh, there would probably be a day where we can't trade, where we can't put our hands on the market and participate as a speculator. It may be short term. It may be very, well, brief and infrequent. Not infrequent, but inconvenient. But the pace at which things might start moving in the next couple months might be a little bit of a shock to some of you. I've mentioned many times before that uh, you have to get your house ready. That means I mean, if you're making money, the worst thing you can do, folks, is go out to nice restaurants and show everybody how much you wasted money on food that probably doesn't taste that good. I get it. You know, some of you have never had that kind of money before. You want to go out there and show the world on Twitter and Instagram and whatnot. Here, look where I'm eating. Here, here's what I'm spending my money on. And that's just a one meal event. And these people probably don't have food beyond a couple days in their house. Your money is about to change drastically, not just in the States, but everywhere. I mentioned this last year. I'm not going to go over all that again. But there was a funded account company that uh, had the hand laid on them. And everything got locked up and they can't do anything. They can't touch any of the money. They can't pay out. They can't allow you to trade. They can't operate as a business. And I mentioned this you know, over the last year or so. And this is exactly why when a lot of the funded account companies would reach out to me and ask me to do, do some kind of marketing, you know, dual thing. And I, I just was not interested. I'm not interested in any of that. And the number one reason was I don't like to be affiliated with anything. So that way, when I give you my opinion, it's honest. It may not be what you want to hear. And the topics I talk about in these Twitter spaces may not be the things that you want to hear. but it's what I'm going to talk about. And I'm not going to go in business with anybody else because I don't know what another company might do. And in me as an entity, a person, a human being, and I have my own brand and I don't want to associate my brand and me as a person with any other company out there that may, I don't know if these companies are running things on the up and up, if they're being honest, if they're defrauding their clients, I don't know. And I'm not suggesting that the company that, had their hand held today was doing anything illegal or anything like that. I don't know. That's not the point. The point is this. I told you all to stop thinking about getting rich. Okay. Don't, don't try to get rich. Try to get your ends met. Put money aside as you make it, take it out. I guarantee you there's a lot of people that have money in that funded account company. And maybe they were going to do a, a request for a withdrawal. Maybe they were. Maybe they weren't. And now they wish they would have done it. But there's going to be a day where we wake up one day and the markets you just watched me kick the shit out of the day probably won't be allowed to be traded for a, a period of time. Now you're probably asking yourself, you know, what the hell is he talking about? Well, back in September 11th, some of you cats are too young for this to even know about. <laughs> you probably heard about it in, in passing. But uh, in 2001, when that 
event took place, the stock market was shut down for a little bit. And that was an uncertain time. You know, as somebody that looked to that as a means of generating wealth, feeding myself, you know, running a business with it as well, um, all those things became, to be honest with you, scary. And I developed a great deal of anxiety then around all this. I'm not scared. I'm not trying to tell you to be fearful. I'm not, do I sound like I'm scared? I'm not. I'm concerned because I believe that some of you are just pretending the things I'm talking about, like in this topic here, which is not about trading beyond the scope of once you make money, take it out. That's the, that's the extent of the discussion. So if you're not wanting to hear this, if you want to be in your own little dream world and think that nothing's going to happen to you in your neck of the woods, in your area, your na your neighborhood, your country, it ain't going to happen here. Okay, just sit around and wait because it's coming. I said this last year, you know, it's not going to be stopped. You're not going to stop it. You're not going to vote it out. You're not going to change regimes. You know, impeachments aren't going to change it. You know, indictments are not going to change it. These things are going to happen. And it's going to be very uncomfortable, even for people like me and have a lot more money than me. We're all going to feel it. We're all going to feel it. And I want you to think about how you might have money that's owed to you technically with this specific company. It's a Forex prop firm. I'm not going to say it by name because, again, I'm not trying to make anything worse than it already is for them because I don't know them. I don't do business with them. And to be honest, I don't know if I have any students that have ever got a payout from them either but if you have you know reply to this twitter space and let everybody know about it and if you have money tied up in it let everybody know about it because it's going to confirm what i said last year on two things on two fronts i said number one tomorrow's not promising no one okay and your money as you make it stop thinking about getting rich as you make it take it out Weekly, bi-weekly, once a month, whatever, but your ass better be taking money out every single 20 days or more. You have to you have to take it out. Leaving it in there. This is a wake-up call, folks. It it might get sorted. They may be back in business after whenever they go to do their court or whatever it is. They, they might clear them and then everything goes back to normal. That's Great, and I hope it happens for everyone. But I look at it this way. It's the handwriting on the wall. It's the very thing I told you to prepare for. These prop firms, I don't know very much about them, admittedly. So I'm trying to be very careful in what I say because I don't want to sound dogmatic. I don't want to sound like I know everything about it because I don't. You know, my son, they had an issue with you know, trying to do funded accounts. Cameron's got funded, and there you go. Is he trading his funded account through Top Step yet? No. Waiting. But you have no idea how difficult things are going to get. I told you <laughs> science fiction level stuff is coming, folks. And, and they're talking about flying saucers and you know, all this bullshit. And yes, that was a direct energy weapon used in Maui. And if you don't think so, you're a fucking idiot. They won't let anybody in there. You won't, you can't fly a drone over it. You can't take pictures. The media is not allowed in there. So come on. There's cars that were literally, you know, crispy, melted the rims off of them. And there's grass and trees all around it. How'd that happen? Yeah. All these things are going to come to a neighborhood where you are. Your country, your state, it ain't going to matter if it's Democrat or Republican, it's going to happen. And when it gets hard and difficult, you're going to wish you had extra non-perishable food and water and clean water filters to procure more things that you use on a daily basis. That's wealth, acquiring that. Not going out there buying more shit, spending money on food for one meal just to floss in the front of other people. It's stupid. 
to me, it's it's shocking to see the level of ignorance. Like everybody's pretending like we're in a, a good place right now. You might be making money. And I'm thankful if I had a hand in that and you're making money. That's wonderful. If I didn't and you're making money using somebody else's stuff, I'm thankful. I'm glad that you are. But what are you doing with it? Are you putting things back or like clothing, extra pair of shoes, light bulbs? I told you about light bulbs last year. People were like, what the fuck are you talking about? They literally banned certain light bulbs. Now they're talking about fucking banning ceiling fans and gas stoves and shit like that because they want you subservient. They want to be able to say, okay, you don't listen. You don't want to comply. You don't want to do the shit we tell you to do. You don't want to take your medicine. We'll just turn your shit off. It's easy when everybody's on an electric. But it's funny that we have all these issues talking about our electric power grid and how susceptible it is to failing. And we got all these fucking stupid ass electric cars, Tesla horse shit. When the batteries go up, it costs the same thing as buying the car all over again. And what do you do with those batteries? They're not biodegradable. They're like the windmill blades. Oh, this is green energy. Look at all the dead birds underneath the windmills. They don't want to talk about that shit. You're being lied to constantly from all angles. They're wearing you down. And most of the people in this community, if you're making money, you're walking around oblivious. You got your fingers in your ears. You got your blinders on. You don't want to look around and see what's really going on because that's not in your house. You don't really have to take care of that. You don't have to worry with that. Like a fellow sent to me, he goes, why are you talking about your son? And it's at your personal business. All I give a shit about is the markets. Tell me what the market's going to do. You know, that's the, that's the kind of shit that I can't wait to get away from in November. I can't wait. What kind of person is that? Walking around, you owe me something. Don't, don't share anything else that's on your mind that's going to cause me to act a certain way. Let me toss this out there too. I saw a guy tweet to me. He said, uh, why am I acting like I'm today? Like, like this is the first time I ever bit back at anyone that ever talked shit to me. The last space we did, you know, I said that uh, when you know your model and you know it intimately, you'll know that you can walk out there at any given time and take it home. And I gave you a number. I said, I can go out there on Thursday. I can go out there on Friday and I can make $15,000 in some Yahoo. And I'm sure you'll, you'll get the same stuff. If you stay on social media and you find profitability and consistency and you want to chat about it with other people, that 99% of them are, are, are broke. And they're hateful people. They're going to throw shit at you and cause you to feel like you got to flex on them and show them something. I don't owe any of you anything. You don't owe them anything. But because I'm in need of venting because of all the stress I've had with my son's injury, I know what I can do. I know what my algorithm is going to do, even on non-farm payroll Fridays. I know once it does a specific thing I have to wait for. If I trade before that, I will get burned. But once it does what I'm looking for, it's over. So $15,000 was delivered to you and you watched it today. And no, that wasn't a fucking demo account. But let's say what you would do if you made that, if you profited that, if you, uh, let me lay my 51 year old bones down here. If you made that, what would you do with it today? Go out and buy something, maybe some new threads. Maybe go out there and get yourself a nice motorcycle, a jet ski or something like that. Down payment on a new car to get yourself in debt. You have to be thinking about how you're going to remove any outside Interference to your peace of mind. See, what good is it? What good is it going to be for you if you know how to trade and you're really, really good at it and you know your model and that's wonderful? But what good is that skill if you can't get things to feed you and your family? 
You ever think about that? You probably never thought about it before. See, I've been homeless before. I know what it feels like to not have something to eat. And being too prideful to go ask for something. I've been there. I know what that's like. Imagine having that on your shoulders. With or without a family member that you're taking care of. A child. A spouse. A significant other. That maybe they don't work and you're the breadwinner. You need to open your eyes and look around. It is coming. Everything's going to go upside down. Fast. It's going to happen real fast. And it's going to be much like the people that have an account with that one company that's now been halted. They can't touch it. But it's going to happen for everyone. Overnight, something's going to happen. And it sounds like Chicken Little, right? Your new, your new listener. Oh, here you go. Doom and gloom, Chicken Little guy. Where were you in 2019 when I said all this shit was coming for it did? Mm. I'm batting a thousand, folks. And I'm telling you what the fuck's coming. I'm not even ready for. And I have all kinds of shit. And I know I don't have enough. And you're running around here with macaroni and fucking cheese. One box of that probably in your fucking cabinet. Some cereal. The last quarter of a milk jug in your refrigerator. And probably two eggs. In the heel of a loaf of fucking bread. And you think you're good. You're not. How can you reasonably expect to manage your emotions when you don't have that? When it gets harder. Yeah, the markets will probably trade around. They'll be moving all around, I'm sure. But will you be able to focus? You might have money in their account. You might be able to pull money out. You might be able to do that. But you might not be able to get to get the things that you need. Canned goods. Canned goods, in case you haven't noticed, uh, they, they've gone up in cost and they're about to go up a lot more. Tariffs are being placed on the materials that make the cans. And you're going to see about a 30 to 40% increase on that. And you're probably thinking, oh, big deal. I can, that's nothing. Really? What do you think it's going to be like when people like me that have more and I can stock up and then they stock up and other people stock up? There isn't enough. Your stores only have a three day supply. And now, since 2020, it's less than three days. You ever look at your aisles in the grocery aisles? They're front loaded. That means it's all lined up on the front edge of the aisle to make it look like it's full. But behind it's nothing. Things that you get before are hard to get. And everything's really expensive. And obviously, you can see, I had no difficulty making money. But it is unbelievably expensive and when we go to the grocery store and i see how much that stuff costs and i think about you as a student that's brand new you haven't started making money yet how do people like you make this how do you get by like i'm sick to my stomach you know, seeing how much some of this stuff costs not because it's breaking me but because i know what it's like to be right where you are right now And I know some of you are not going to listen to me. You don't care about these types of discussions. You're already turned off. And you're about to leave if you haven't already. I know it sounds unlikely. It seems far-fetched. But we are going to enter a very, very hard time. And for people thinking that Trump's going to get reelected, he's going to make it all go away. Stop. He wasn't able to do shit when he was in there the last time, and nothing will happen if he gets in there again this time. It's happening everywhere. It's been planned for a long time. They gained a lot of ground, and they're not going to let go of it. In 2010, when I stepped out on baby pips, I thought I had a little bit more time than this, but it's it's speeding up. It's getting quicker, and they're obviously much more 
interested in getting it done, getting things in motion. So my question to you is, where's your money? Do you know where it is? If it's tied up in a company, if the bulk of it's tied up in a company, if the bulk of it's tied up in investments that you can't put your hands on, if it's tied up in bank account deposits or CDs, and in my opinion, and I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just telling you my personal opinion, I would be taking that shit and turning it into tangible things like non-perishable food, over-the-counter medicines, clothing, shoes, household things that you need. How about furnace filters? You ever thought about that? Not thinking about that, are you? Thinking, well, you know, I'll just go to Home Depot and get one. That stuff's going to be used. And what happens if you can't get it? You're going to run your system on a dirty filter or no filter? We're talking about adult things here today, folks. And if you want to be a profitable trader, that's one thing. It's great. But what do you do with your money once you get it? Are you being a good steward with it? Are you preparing and making sure and ensuring that you and your family are going to be at least hedged? Not entirely protected, not entirely shielded, but you have a buffer. Do you have three months worth of food in your house? I mean, that's a lot of food. I said this before, and I said it when I was talking only to my private mentorship group, which there is no way of joining it. It's not even active like you, you would imagine it would be. It's not. It's just they, they can ask me questions, and that's it. I don't make videos for them. Don't ask me to join, and I'm not running a mentorship on Instagram, offering it for $1,000. They're all scammers. But I told my students then, in 2020, I said, you know, buy stock of them, canned goods and things. They do not go bad. The sell-by date or best-by date on cans are just for you to hurry up and use or throw it away like a dumbass and go buy it again. You can eat canned goods 15 years after their fucking date. You might have a little bit of a texture change in it. It might taste a little differently. might lose a little bit of nutritional value, but as long as the can's not bloated or, or anything's leaking, it's healthy. It's fine. I've eaten food out of cans years way past beyond their best buy date. And this student said, I had to throw all my food away. You told us to buy all this stuff and nothing happened. You should have cycled through it and used it and then replace it as you use it. You're paying for car insurance, folks. If you have a home, you're paying property taxes, your homeowner's insurance. You're paying for all these things. You're in a time in your life, in a time in this world, in history, where you need to be starting to put some money aside for things that ensures that your life, your quality of life, will be at least hedged a little bit where everybody else is going to lose. Look at the shit with the um, toilet paper last time. And all that fucking horse shit. The flu came out and they renamed it. And you couldn't get your hands on toilet paper. I had a year's worth of toilet paper. I bought that shit in December of 19. 2019, I had a year's worth of toilet paper. And I have bidets. I have portable bidets. All those things were in preparation for what I knew the human mind would do. Bad weather comes. What do we need? Toilet paper, bread, milk, and eggs. Going to the store, that's all gone. That's what the mind of the average person thinks. Oh, a storm's coming? It might snow me in for a day or two at worst, maybe three. Well, I better make sure I have eggs to eat, milk to drink, bread to make sandwiches with, and something to wipe my ass, because all I'm going to be doing is sitting around eating and shitting all day. That's the extent of the average human person thinking about how they hedge any problem that comes at them. Feed their fucking face and have something to wipe their ass. That's lunacy. Like, <laughs> this is something way beyond a bad snowstorm. This is something worse than that. This is going to be prolonged. And I don't think three months of non-perishable food is enough, really. 
but you might not have space for it. You might live in an apartment. You might be living in an efficiency where it's just basically a bathroom, a kitchenette area, and where you sleep. Don't have a whole lot of storage room, but there's room under your bed, closets. I'd stack the shit around along the wall. And I'd, my walls would be shit stacked up if that's how I lived. I'd have as much as I could have on my hand. In terms of non-perishable food, water, water filters, over-the-counter medicines. We're going to see shit happen in the United States that we have never seen before. They want everybody to lose their fucking mind. So that way they can crack down and put it all on the table. Because that's really the end game. This country is going to be a police state. This is the way it's going to be. You don't listen? Okay. Get ready. We are not looking at a Republican-Democrat issue. Everybody in those fucking seats are all in on it. They're all actors. They're all theater players. And you are sold up Shit's Creek just like me and everybody else. Voting ain't going to change shit. Elections ain't going to change shit. And you have to open your eyes to it. I'm not telling you how to vote because I don't vote. I'm not here to try to sway or influence an election because it ain't an election. It's a selection. I have never voted because it doesn't matter. And anybody thinks it does, they're fools. They, they drank the Kool-Aid. Do you have someone that you have to take care of? Maybe you have a, a parent that's not doing too well and you have to stop in every now and then and make sure they have what they need or if they're comfortable or if they haven't had a visitor in a while. One step away from a nursing home type scenario. Might be a good idea to take some of that money you're making and get some extra for them. Pad them out. With some toilet paper and some canned goods and things that they like. Comfort foods, candies, hard candies. You have kids? If you had children, you know, imagine what it would be like stressed out and you can't get the things that they want to have. You know, a piece of candy goes a long way to build a, a, a child's morale up. Hard candy stays good for a long, long time. You, you got to be thinking how you can create creature comforts in the most stressful fucking time of your life because that's what's coming. Where is your money? Do you know where it's at? Because if it's not in your hands, it's not your fucking money. It's not yours unless you have it in your hand. And it's getting harder and harder to have money anywhere in any bank. They're literally debanking people that talk shit. Well, you got to find somewhere else to put your money. We can't do business here with you. Think about that. What would you do with that? Say you had hundreds of millions of dollars and you're sitting around wondering what the fuck you're supposed to do with that. That's a problem. Somebody's like, I, I want that problem. No. There is no exemptions with what is coming. If you're not part of that club, it's going to press on you. And it sounds uncomfortable hearing it probably. If you're, if you're listening and you're really taking it to heart, it probably feels like this is something to be terrified of. It's not to be scaring you. It's not meant to do that. I'm trying to call you to action to do something to prepare your house. And as you use what you stock up, as you use it, replace it. That's a bill that you need to put at the top of the list. Food, over-the-counter medicines, things that you need to, to cope with this life. There it is. Been uh, putting off getting your new eyeglass prescription done again. I just went and did it. I got to go back. They fucked up my transition because... I have three things in my glasses because I have some serious issues with my eyes. So 
the young man that did the measurements on the lenses, they're a little off. So it kind of makes me have to hold my head a certain way, which is not comfortable at all. So I got to go take them back, but they can fix that in a week. But don't put it off. You have something you got to have to take care of medically. I'll get around to it eventually. Do it now. Do it right now. Get your shit sorted. Get some cash on hand as much as you feel like you should have on hand. I think at least $2,500, $3,000 spendable right now. Put it in your pocket, you know, cash. Put it in, in your house somewhere where you know, nobody can just go in and just pick it up and take it. Keep your gas tanks in your cars. Above half. And this guy's talking all kinds of shit. Yes, I am. I keep my cars just like that. And I'm upset when my wife takes her car out and she comes home and she doesn't tell me she's under. I mean, I'm sorry. She goes under a quarter of a tank. I've always told all my kids, look, you know, when I buy these cars, don't take the gas under one quarter. Always keep at least a quarter tank. Well, since all this shit started. In 2020, I tell them all the time, half is, is empty. Like you're out of gas. What's this mean? Why, why is this so important? Look what happened down in uh, Florida for the folks that live in Tampa. You think that that was a fucking accident? They put diesel in all that? Look around all these train wrecks, all this shit that's happening, these food processing plants that are blowing up. All these things are increasing. We've never had that shit before. We have never seen that before. Not in the pace and frequency that it's happening. We have all these people coming in from the southern border. You have no idea who's waltzing in. They're finding these fucking bio labs in, in different states and shit. And folks, listen, I understand it's uncomfortable to think about that stuff. And it's not to inspire panic or anxiety or anything like that, but you got to start thinking differently. You got to have your head in a swivel and not walk around with your fucking face in your four inch universe or your cell phone while you're walking. Look around. Most people are just staring at their fucking phone. They're sitting on their ass, not even aware of what's around them at the time. Outside, in restaurants, in public places, constantly looking at this fucking thing I'm holding, talking to you, which I can't stand, and I'm getting rid of this motherfucker in November. This is the biggest fucking intrusive thing they've ever created. It spies on you. It listens to you. It tracks you. And you pay $2,000 for the motherfucker every year and a half, two years, and feel like, wow, I got the next greatest thing. No, you don't. You're no different between a fucking piece of livestock with a tag in its ear. RFID chip in it, knowing exactly where it's at on the pasture. Where's our where's our cow 354? Oh, it's pulled over. Oh, yeah, he's over down there. Go get him. It's his time to get uh, sla slaughtered. When I'm out and about, my phone don't go a fucking place at me. We are in some 1984 level shit and it's getting ready to go upside down. And it's going to feel like it feels for those folks that can't touch their money. I'm sure they're alarmed right now. They're thinking, I got scammed. I'm not going to get my money. They might not. I think that it would be good for them to be able to clear everything that they've done. If they've done anything wrong, let them get their money. But imagine the folks that are in that situation right now, and they've been working on their account and building it up and working really hard to do it, and they can't touch it right now. What are they feeling right now? See, you're uncomfortable hearing me talk like this because you're so used to me puffing you up and cheerleading you that you're going to kick its ass and the market's going to bend its will to you, and oh, it's going to be great. Now we're talking about reality. We're talking about things that matter most, where the rubber meets the road. Real world stuff. What if it was you that couldn't get your money out of the bank? 
and you couldn't feed the person or persons that you're responsible for. Could you trade? If you had access to the markets, could you trade and trust your ability to focus? I'm going to humbly submit you won't. That's why I'm talking to you. I know this community is all about trading, learning how to make money and learn how to do it well. I know why you're here. Okay, I didn't lose sight of that. and I'm not trying to waste your time, but this is really important, folks. If you can't see what's going on, that's shocking to me. Like, it's literally shocking. We have the most inept motherfuckers in seats of power and authority, not just in America, everywhere. They're fucking literally, they're, they're clowns. And it's done on purpose because you they want to demoralize you. They want you to feel like, what's the fucking use? And what are you going to do with that energy? You're going to direct it at each other. Like it's always been divided right into. You can't do anything to them. So what are you going to do? You're going to take your emotional rage and frustrations out on your neighbor. Go into stores and take shit that you don't have the authority to do. Steal shit that isn't paid for. Tear up shit that you don't have to replace or repair. Hurt people. Gang up on them. Stomp on people's fucking cars. Break into people's homes. Take their shit. All that stuff's going to increase. Are you prepared if it happens at your home? I have a lot of things that I hope I never have to use. I don't want to do anything to hurt anybody else. But I know what's coming is going to cause people that need something. And they're going to be desperate. They're going to be wanting it. And they may come here and make the mistake of knocking on this door. And they won't ever leave. We're going into dangerous times, folks. They want everybody pissed off at everyone. It's already been discovered that there's gangs of people that have come across the border, and they correct. You know, they collected, you know, um, a small community in groups, and they go into states, and they scope out an area for a little while, and they do home invasions, and then they move out of that state and go into another one. That's what's going on right now. Do you feel like you could just go to your door and just open the door for whoever's knocking? If you think like that, don't. Shit's about to get really, really uncomfortable, dangerous. And you got to second guess things. Don't think that the person walking up to you smiling is just walking by to say, you know, how you doing? If you're a lady and you got a purse in your hand and such, I wouldn't have anything of any value in the purse. I would have it in my pocket. That way, if your shit gets snatched, whatever. It was one of those knockoff Louis Vuitton purses anyway, right? <laughs> I'm not trying to be uh, making fun of anybody, but I'm just, I see a lot of folks down in our area, and you can you can spot a fake one. So your money needs to be in your hands. And I know some of you are laughing. Ha <laughs> ha, that's why I got into crypto, baby. Well, your shit's about to get fucked there, too. I know. I know. ICT don't know shit. I know. When these central bank digital currencies are shoved up everyone's ass, and that money is associated to an expiration date, you have to spend it or you lose the credit. If you don't listen, you don't comply, your shit gets turned off. There ain't nothing you can do about it. You can't go to the bank and take it out. 
Do you honestly believe that they're going to let you? They're going to allow you to have Bitcoin and all these other fucking silly cartoon coins? Listen, folks, I know that when I talk about this, some of you are very, very passionate about that crypto space. I understand. Believe me, I know more than you fucking realize about the human mind. I don't know very much about crypto. But I know that that's the biggest fucking scam, frauding piece of shit fucking operation they've ever pulled on anybody. It's a psyop. And what you have done is allowed them to bring in the very thing they intended to create and put in place when they allow Bitcoin on the scene. Where's your Bitcoin 100,000? Wasn't that supposed to happen years ago? Oh, don't worry. When it does, it's halving. It's going to half. You bet your sweet ass. We're going back under 10,000. It's going to half. They can't do that. They won't do that. It's decentralized. Yeah. If they can't do all that, how the fuck do they seize people's fucking shit then? I told you once they put a futures contract on it. Your unicorn lost its horn. Now it's a fucking donkey. And you're sitting there petting it, trusting it. It's gonna it's gonna take you higher places. You're gonna be able to ride rainbows and fucking <laughs> I, I look, I get it. I understand. I, I listened to my son. He, he had all kinds of wonderful thoughts about it too. Ask him now what he thinks about it. He's doing good, by the way, in case you're wondering. Every day is a little bit more improvement. But your money needs to be in things that are tangible. Now, notice I haven't said gold and silver. <sighs> finally, finally, ICT is talking about uh, some silver and gold. Uh, silver and gold is going to be fucking worthless. And that's my faith talking. Okay, that's what I believe eventually the scriptures say that people are going to take their gold and silver and throw it in the street. So I don't look to that as a protection. And before that happens, you're not going to be permitted to have gold. What? They'll never do that. They did it before. You don't know your history. They don't teach that anymore. Mm hmm Yep. It was illegal for you to have gold. I know. I know. Your woke, agended schooling institutions didn't tell you that. But that's really what happened. And when you have money that you've made, you need to be taking it out. As you make it, take it out. You know what that's going to do for you? Some of you are like, I ain't doing that, man. I got to have this cushion. And let's talk about why you want to have that cushion in your account. Because you're fucking reckless. And you know what you're doing is on a whim. You're getting lucky. You're over leveraging. You're swinging for the fucking fences. You're not waiting for the setup. You're chasing price. So you need a cushion. If you strip it back down to where you start with your operating expenses, whatever that is, your funded account, when it gets to the degree where you're there and you're, you know, whatever you make, you do a profit split with your company you're with, whoever that may be. At the end of the week, Every two weeks, I think at best, I mean, that should be the longest you wait. But as soon as you're eligible to get money out of it, take it back. Take it out. That's how you beat them. Because they're hoping you're going to want to build it up. And then what happens is greed does its work. And you'll never, ever have to ask them for money in a payout. Pay yourself when you get it. But it's only 700 bucks, ICT. You know. 700 fucking bucks is better in your pocket than 700 bucks that you lost next week trying to make it 2,000. You'll trade with more discipline if you do this. How much of your, uh, how much of your paycheck 
Okay, how much are you spending of your paycheck before you get it at the end of the week or biweekly? Some of you that are irresponsible have already spent it last month with silly shit that you shouldn't have spent money on. Oh, you don't know where I'm at, ICT. I'm barely making ends meet. Right, but you probably got every fucking streaming service on the fucking planet, like my fucking daughter. I can't afford my bills. You have everything that you don't need to look at. Two gym memberships. Two separate gym memberships. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> you got to take a look at what you have. Go watch that ends series again. If you haven't watched it, if it's one of those ser uh, series on my YouTube channel and they haven't watched yet, go watch it. Because I think that that is required learning. Because they don't teach you in school today. In the last 20 years, they have not taught how to be financially responsible, how to prepare yourself to get out in the real world and take care of things and pay your bills and be on time. They dumbed down to everybody. It's it's, it's ridiculous. And that's why we homeschooled. We saw what was going on with the older ones, and we were like, oh, hell no, we're not doing this with these other ones. The younger ones, they never they never were going to learn what they needed to learn. So we homeschooled, and it's the best decision I ever made. I kept all that bullshit out of their minds. They know what a girl is. They know what a boy is. They know how to act. How to behave. They know how to conduct themselves like civilized people. And they don't feel entitled. And I'm sure I was going to piss a lot of people off listening, but I don't give a fuck. Some of you need to have that. But for the folks that walk around thinking everything's great, next five, if it even goes that fucking long. Because the way things are speeding up, like... I don't know. I don't I don't think five months is going to be required, but anywhere between five and eight months from where we're at now. Remember, I told you 18 months last year. Last year, I told you 18 months is all you got. And you better have shit together. Don't be going there trying to do funded account challenges and over leverage everything, 15 fucking contracts just to get a payout and then waste it on dumb shit. Don't be in there plunking money down in live trading when you're not prepared for it. But if you have not taken your profits from a funded account company that you've been making money with, if you're not taking that and putting it into a real broker, a real fucking broker, a real broker that you pay commissions on, all those things, just like a traditional model, that, in my opinion should be part of your financial plan. I mean, I understand I have students are doing really, really well doing the funded account stuff. That's great. Okay. And I'm sure there's tax treatment that's favorable in a lot of ways doing it that way. But look what just happened. Do you have all your eggs in one basket? Because if you do, that's probably not smart. And you know that. But it's easier to just Pretend it won't happen to you and just keep doing what you're doing. Maybe you might get out of there before it happens to you. What's your exit strategy? Do you have one? How do you close up your operation if you believe that this might get worse and be infectious across other companies? What happens if another one gets shut down for three? What's that going to do for your confidence? Because you haven't taken any of the money you've been making and putting it into a real brokerage account where you can do what you're doing right now. See, you don't want to do it that way. Because when you lose that money, there isn't a cheap reset. You lost that money. And this type of industry caters to that mindset, which is really unfortunate because I'm trying to be a voice of reason that to remind you that while you, yes, you could be very profitable doing that, but when you get that money, what are you doing with it? How are you getting it? Are you gambling? Are you recklessly just going in there buying lots of accounts and just seeing what the hell happens? Throw it against the wall and see what sticks. 
You can't do that with a live account. You got to treat it like a business. You have to protect and guard that capital. That's, that's rule number one, capital preservation. So if you have money in your funded account that you've earned a profit of, my humble suggestion to you is get that shit the fuck out and turn it into something that's usable. Put it into an account that you can trade if shit goes upside down. If regulators come in and say, that's it, this is illegal, you can't do these types of things anymore. I'm not saying that that should happen or shouldn't happen. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm just saying, do you have something in place as a hedge in the event that that does happen? Because some of you, if that does happen, you're out of this entirely. It completely shuts your whole show down. In depression, anxiety, regret, they'll all come in like a flood. And I'm just trying to be a reminder to you because you're probably not thinking about it. It's easy to get wrapped up in whatever you're doing right now. Thinking it's going to be the same thing next week. You know, I'll go out there and I'll do this and I'll make some money and put it on the Internet. This is what I just made today. And you don't have the money in your hand yet. Don't talk about it until it's in your hand. Don't talk about it until you bought it. It's home out of the box. And stop fucking wasting your money at restaurants paying for shit ass fucking food that you're overpaying for I for one I'm not impressed by that shit I think it's fucking stupid look I'm able to eat in a public establishment big fucking deal man <laughs> I can make most of the shit these people fucking show on their plates I don't need to go around people that I probably don't want to dine with Pay too much money for something I could have made at home and been more comfortable. But everybody's different, I guess. Wasn't that fucking trade awesome? <laughs> <laughs> that fucking trade was fucking cherry today, man. Oh, it was so good. How you like that, Dylan? Does that fucking torture ass up, Dylan boy? Does it? You motherfucker. $15,000. Bitch, I should have said twenty. <laughs> I should have said 25. Should have said 50, really. Some of you folks are never going to learn. But you're going to learn here in a couple months. You're going to learn all about it. You're going to wish you did things in the last year differently. You're going to wish you listened to me. You are going to wish you fucking listened. And at that time, it might be too late for you. So you have to live your life with a purpose. Right now, going forward, when I'm done this session today in about five minutes, everything you do from the time you wake up to the time you lay down needs to be organized. What are you going to work on today? What are you going to pay off? What are you going to provide an extra supply of in your home? How are you going to do things to be more responsible so that way you're prepared when shit hits the fan and fellas, it is coming and it's wet. It's going to splatter. It's going to be all over everything. Rich people are going to feel it too. How are you making your home and house ready? I don't know how long this shit's going to be. I don't know how long we'd have to endure it. I don't know. I got two years worth of food in two places. I have over-the-counter medication that I and my family use. Clothing for all the seasons. Much more clothing than I'll probably ever really need. Shoes. Underwear, folks. Thought about that? Tell me you run around here with the same three fucking pairs of underwear like you're living in the uni again. <laughs> you got to think, man. Because if you are not in a position of at least reasonable comfort. If you're having all these things that are going to plague everyone and stress, you're not going to be able to think clearly about your investments. And you're going to need that because everything around you is going to be falling apart. People are going to be going nuts and don't flash your fucking wealth because everybody's going to have a handout saying, please help me. Please help me. Please help me. Please help me. And eventually you're going to get to the point where you can't help, help all. You can't help all of them. You can't. 
And that one you say no to, that might not end well. Stop flaunting. Stop fucking showing off your shit. You're putting a bullseye on yourself. And nobody really gives a fuck. <laughs> nobody really does. Nobody gives a shit. We don't give a fuck what you drive. We don't give a fuck where you sleep. We don't give a fuck what you pay too much for to wear on your wrist. I got a fucking watch on this phone. Okay? I don't need to have a fucking timepiece on my hand so somebody can knock me in the fucking head and take it off me. We're in a different world now. Different world. And new money, you can tell them, you can spot them easily. There are the people out there flashing all their stuff. That means they just got there. And they can't believe it. They got to show it to everybody. And they need to have everybody worship them and suck their asses off in front of everyone in public. Look at me. Don't you want to be like me? Fuck no, I don't want to be like you. And I got more than all of you. And you ain't never seen shit being flaunted by me. You have to keep your shit private. That's a good thing. It's a real good thing to be private. You're less likely to invite the shit that you don't want. And let them doubt you. Today, what I did today, I did that because I'm emotionally and psychologically weak right now because of all the shit I've been going through with my family. My son's injury has me all fucked up. And when an asshole, I know who it is, really. The guy's name's not Dylan. But this fucking clown has a million fucking sock puppet accounts. And one way, shape, or form, he's always talking to me because he's got new balls to go marry straight. And because he can't do it, he feels good for him to say that kind of stuff. Well, I just shoved it up his ass today again. And I'm begging, come before November. Before November, come. to step for real. I promise you, it will be fucking stunning and demoralizing for you. But anyway, where's your money? If it's not in your hands, it's not yours. Think about that, okay? Enjoy your weekend. Try to get some rest. Don't let this message scare you. Let it be a means of prompting some sense of urgency, not panic, urgency, to get things in your household together. That way you're not uh, a victim and feeling like you're not going to be able to take care of your house and your needs. It's a whole lot easier to manage and navigate the troubles around outside your house when you have food and the things that are creature comforts that you take little notice of right now because it feels good to have money, right? feels good to be blessed, right? Well, those seven years of plenty are drying up, folks. We have seven years of lack. That we all are staring right at. And how much of that will you be able to endure? Because if you're just running around with trying to keep up with clout and social media and trying to do some dumb shit and not making your house ready. You're going to buy food. Okay, it's going to happen. This is not wasted money. You're going to use it. It isn't going to perish. It's not, it's not going to spoil. If nothing happens, and I'm going to say this in close, if nothing happens, and I'm fucking dead wrong, and I hope I am in Jesus' name, please let me be wrong about everything I'm saying here today. Please let me be wrong. I want to be wrong. I want everybody to be able to laugh at me and say, man, you had me scared there for a little while, but look, you were wrong, man. Yes, thank God I was wrong. I want to be able to say that. I want to be able to do that. I do. But what if I'm not? What if I'm not? How will that affect your lifestyle, your family's needs? Maybe it's someone you know that maybe not even a, a blood member of your family. That you know that they're going to need some help. I believe God absolutely blesses people to help people like that. Buy someone's groceries and take them to their house. Say, hey, look. Um, what do you usually like to eat? Because I, I want to make sure you have some extra. 
and buy them a couple months worth of that stuff and put it away for them, rotate their stock for them. And I'm telling you, God honors that stuff. Do you think he likes seeing people put the stuff that they do on social media for personal attention? Do you think he honors any of that? He doesn't. That's pride. He resists the proud. And I want him in everything that I do. I'm encouraging you to invite him into everything that you do. And that's the reason why I'm talking to you today. I did everything demonetized this week. I'm talking to you and I'm trying to encourage you to do things the right way in your own home, how to think differently, how to prepare yourself as a developing student that's going to aim for a properly, consistently profitable with, with trading. None of these things are monetized by me. There's no ads here. I didn't put it on YouTube. I could have wait, I could have weaved this into a video. I could have done that. And I could have spliced out all the cuss words. I could have did this and made it you know, sound pretty and ad friendly. I could have done that and made money on it. To me, I think it would lose its well, aim. I want you to understand that I'm talking to you because I care about you. I care about you and I care about your family, even though I've never shifted your hand. I've never met you face to face. I care about your well-being and I want to see you thrive. But I wish I could tell you more, but this is coming. And you need to get your shit together. You're not going to get it all out, figured out. It's I'm not. I don't have, I have a lot of resources. I have a lot of money and I have a lot of freedom and I still don't feel like I have it all. You're not going to, but what I do have, I think will help me navigate that. And my wife's anxiety, I'm sure will peek through my kid's anxiety that will peek through, especially my daughter. She's going to lose her mind because she has a lot of anxiety because of intrusive fucking people. That are too pussy to step foot in fucking Maryland, bitch. Yeah, you heard me. So, I think that's enough for today. Weekend's about to start. Enjoy it. Make ready as best you can. And I'll talk to you on Tuesday. We'll be back to doing market reviews and analysis and chit-chat on Twitter. Be safe.